are live. All right, so hi everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I am trying to master this Be Live app that I found and it's really, really cool. And if you want to talk with me and play with me and talk about different things that's happening in the world today, I would love, love to have you join me. So I'm trying to stay positive and motivated and put things on my calendar so I'm not just sitting around playing with my cute puppy. And so um, Amber, um, introduce yourself, please. Hello, I am Amber Solar. I am an attorney with Gravis Law, um, practicing in the areas of family law and estate planning. So Amber is a good friend of ours. Her husband used to work with my husband over at Bradford White and Amber did our living will. And um, those of you that know me know that I just experienced two very close deaths, two, two friends that were very close to me and they just died. And neither one of them had a living will or a trust or anything. And um, it was really hard. It was really hard on the family. And I, we, Mike and I used Amber to do our living will. And, um, and I, and, and I thought I had it all planned out. Now I need to go find a funeral planner. It's so, it's so irresponsible and so selfish, I think, not to have these things in place. And as your family is devastated and just trying to make it day by day and trying to make decisions, it's not fair to them, is it, Amber? It's not that's, fair that's, at all. That's true. And and it, you know, when you're already in a state where you're you're, you know, feeling sad and depressed and now having to, you know, play detective at the same time and track down what assets they have and what um, you know, where they ha keep their money, what needs to be done, uh, when there's there's nothing put together for your family already. Uh, it makes it, it makes it a mess to be honest. And it's, it's so much harder and it's so much more of a burden. Um, whereas instead, if you, if you put an estate plan together, so an estate plan is, is all of your documents. So your wills, your trusts, your power of attorney, um, any, anything like that, if you put it all together and you keep it someplace where it can be easily found, um, it, it's really going to help take some of the pressure and some of that burden off of your family when they're already going through a hard time. Yeah, it is. And it's hard to think about it. And it's, it's like, um, one of the things that Mike and I wanted to make sure of is that we wanted to make sure that everybody knew that we don't want to live on machines. We don't want our family to make that decision. So our son and our daughter is not even making that decision because it's not fair. They're making decisions emotionally and they might, it might be very hard to decide whether to pull that plug or not. And um, it's not fair to them to have to think, am I making the right? I can't imagine making that decision for somebody, but someone that you're very, very close to, I think it's really hard. We wanted somebody that had more of a level head and actually you're one of those people, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we wanted people that were more of a level head that wouldn't get so emotional about it. I think it's our kids. We told our kids and they're not even upset about it. They're like, I don't want to decide when it's time to pull the plug. I don't want to be the one, you know? And so we wanted to cover everything. Um, as a realtor, we have um, trust that we, so there's also a realtor real estate section in that trust. Is there, is that right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. So, so when you go, Go ahead. When when you have a trust, um, pro any property that you own, real estate, real property, so real estate, um, you know, houses, condos, land, uh, it, even um, corporate buildings and, and things of that nature, all of those can be placed into your trust, um, where they they can then be easily controlled right away um, if you were to unexpectedly pass. Um, instead of having to, the reason that we put trust in place is so that it doesn't, all of that property doesn't have to go through the probate courts before, uh, you know, it can be addressed and dealt with. Um, putting it, putting those items in trust, especially big ticket items like real estate, mm -hmm. makes it, makes it manageable, you know, the day after, after you're passing. So it's, that's one of the biggest benefits of a trust. It really is. I have someone texting me, Amber, that says that they can't 
ask questions. So obviously I have something turned off. And so I just want to tell everybody, if you have questions for Amber, text me at 616-443-0596 or Facebook message me. And I have my phone sitting next to me. Or if you know Amber, you can send her a message, I'm sure. Um, I don't know why it's not letting the comments happen right now, but um, Patricia, you said you had a question you wanted to ask. So just either text me or Facebook message me and I'll get your questions. And so um, how often should you update your trust? You know, I, I always recommend that that people give it a look at least once a year. Um, when I do an estate plan, I try to schedule out a time for all of my clients where I at least look over the, all of their will documents and make sure that it still complies with the law. Um, I recommend to my clients that they look at it at least once a year to make sure that the people that they have appointed uh, as their trustees or their executors um, are still somebody that they one would be able to, um, or two that they even want to, um, you know, unfortunately relationships change sometimes. And, and some of the people that you may have initially picked when you did your estate plan, right. is somebody that you would trust now. So. Right. Right. In our case, our one friend died. And so we had to change that name up. And so what are some things that people never think about when you sit with them and you talk to them about their trust? What, what are some aha moments? Well, I, I really think that the biggest one is just with with wills and and age. There's there's this there's this big thing um, of people who are you know in their in their thirties and twenties um, who are having children. They have minor young minor children. They don't think that they need any sort of will or trust. Um, you know, that's it's something that's for older people, um, but it, it's really not, and it's very important that uh, people with minor children have at the very least a will because that is the document you use to name who's going who's going to be the guardian of your children and raise your children if you're not able to you know there's uh if you don't have that document ultimately the court's going to decide and you know that's certainly not something i'd want and it's something most parents wouldn't want they they want to be able to say who they trust most with their children and sometimes um, people you think would gladly take your children, sometimes they won't. Right. And, right? right. And so sometimes you yeah. might assume they'll be, oh, they'll be fine. And they're like, no, I don't want to watch your kids. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It was really important to me. That was probably our most important thing that we did um, is to make sure who was going to watch over our children. And so we knew that we didn't want our parents to have to do that because they were older and that wouldn't have been fair to anybody. So we knew that we, I think the courts might just automatically give the kids to a grandparent maybe if no one else is living. Typically, and we knew, yeah. Yeah. So we knew we didn't want that because if, if grandma and granddad's older, they're not going to say no, most likely because they would feel really crappy about it. But honestly, you know, they would be, I'm, I'm like, I'm at the age now that I don't think I want kids full time anymore. I want to be a grandma. You know what right. I mean? I yep. have a puppy full time and I forgot what it was like. And so, <laughs> I, <laughs> so I know that I wouldn't want to do that. And so um, other than um, your, uh, your finances and your bank statements and your real estate and your kids, is there anything else that you might put into a trust that you don't think about? Um, well, in, into a, a trust that's speaking separately to a trust. So we just, I just said a will is where you name the guardian of your kids. Okay. In a trust, um, I often recommend trust for people who also have minor children. It's not just something that's for the wealthy. Um, you know, it's a, a trust gives you a lot more control over when your kids are get the get their money um you know with it with a will if you if you just have a will and it names your children as beneficiaries if you pass while they're still minors the moment they turn 18 they're entitled to that cash um and you know that's really no one's ready at 18 to take all that cash absolutely not i would have spent it on shoes i'm sure <laughs> so no, i would have spent it all in a year <laughs> at a party <laughs> 
the after party. <laughs> a, a, trust, a trust makes it so that you can you can put whatever guidelines you want to put. You can say, well, you'll get the money when you turn 25, or you'll get half when you're 18, or you'll get all the money after you graduate from college. So you know, it gives parents a lot of the flexibility to be able to decide what's right for them and their kids and their family, um, which is which is a really, really big uh, feature of a trust that that I really push with my clients. it's It's really great to utilize it in that way. Um, some of the other assets for a trust, you know, um, there's 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 trust for, um, certain kinds of, of guns that are, you know, antiques or collectibles. Um, there's trusts available for certain animals um, that are, you know, higher in value, I guess. So like things like horses, um, you can have included as part of your trust uh, to, to do their care. Pets in general, you can set up a trust, um, to, you know, to pay for the cost of that pet or for whoever's caring for it once you pass. Right. Um, is, and that's, that's, there's a lot of things in there that are really helpful. Another big one is if you own your own business, um, there's a, a lot of benefits to having a trust and a trustee in place uh, to, to kind of manage the, the business affairs and what's going to happen with that business if you were to unexpectedly pass. I think that is so important. So that just reminded me of something. So most recently I called you because I didn't understand the trustees um, um, uh, job and what their position was. And if you don't assign somebody that it's not just when you pass, it's when you become inca incapacitated, right? When you can't handle, so you might be really sick or you're unable to handle things. Is that correct? Right. So if you if you become incapacitated where you're unable to make your own decisions, then um, a professional uh, trustee can be appointed. It doesn't have to be a professional, but um, that's usually who it will be, at least temporarily. Um, and the the trust itself has basically guidelines for that um, for the person that's stepping in as the, the successor trustee, the secondary trustee, it has rules that they have to follow when managing your trust, um, both, you know, before you're passing and after. Right. So I had um, someone call me, her mom was um, incapacitated. She was in, she couldn't take care of her affairs anymore. They had no one in place to take care of her affairs. And so it had to go to the court. And I guess the court decided that my client and her husband weren't able to take care of it for whatever reason. And um, so they they assigned a trustee from the court to take care of everything. And long story short, she didn't listen to the advice of the realtors and she ended up firing me because she didn't like my advice. And we had an offer on the table for $10,000 more for the house then if then but, but she wanted to do it her way and so she right. lost her clients money so that trustee did not work in my opinion in the best interest she was more about her ego so you want to make sure that you you know if they would have if she would have had a trust or a will i get confused which one does which but mm -hmm. um, uh it, it could have been assigned to her kids and then her kids could have hired me knowing that i was going to do the best thing for them Right, and and a, a big document is that should also be in place and part of your estate plan um, is your power of attorney. So you already touched on the medical power of attorney, but there's also a financial power of attorney, and that's really really important. Um, you know, if if you are still alive but you're incapacitated, you can't make your own decisions. The financial power of attorney allows um, whoever you decide, whoever you put in place. To, to handle those financial assets for you. And that, that includes um, dealing with leases, that includes selling property, buying property in some cases, um, that, you know, it's in any and everything to do with, you know, banking and your uh, investments, things like that, they can all be handled by that person that you trust through a financial power of attorney instead of through whoever the, the court might assign. So you think it's even more important than, you know, if you're past and they screw up, well, 
okay, your past, you're not living through it. But if you're like incapacitated, like say that you have dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that, you're still living. That trust that you give to somebody, you know, the person that's, you might want to say that's even more important than the other. Absolutely. Yeah. Living, right? <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So, um, so I think people don't do it because one, because you said, because they think maybe they're too young and they don't need, need it. And then two, they think it might be expensive or it might be time consuming. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, a big misconception. Um, you know, if you go to an attorney, it, it isn't going to be ultra cheap. You're not going to get a full estate plan for a hundred dollars, but um, most attorneys that I have met with have been, are, are very reasonably priced. Um, you know, the I I can't give prices out because it, it kind of varies on on what you need. You're not um, I know that you're not right, and I know that that expensive is in the eyes of the beholder, but you're not breaking right. the bank. And and I think no. you can put it in layers too, right? You can say, all right, I'm going to do this part this time and this part this time. So you could probably even do it in layers if you wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's something that you can you can build on. You know, if you want to start with just a, a will and then down the line open a trust, um, that's absolutely something that's completely doable. Um, and you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of programs online where people can make their own um, wills, and and some of them will let you make a trust. I really really don't like those, especially with trusts. They, they're they not state specific. They tend to be missing a lot of important language that the courts need in place. Right. Um, so, you know, they're, they're cheaper, but it's one of those things where you kind of get what you pay for. Um, don't and if they you don't have the right documents, it's gonna hurt down the line. So when you go to file something, so when you do all this, you file it with, um, the county, right? You take all these this paperwork and you file. It doesn't have to be on a, a certain type of paper or a certain size and that type of thing, too. Nope. No. Um, okay. our, 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 our real estate do. So that's why I wondered. Okay. <laughs> nope, not anymore. So as long oh, okay. as a docu it can be handwritten on a piece of paper if you want, as long as it's um, a document that is signed, notarized, and has at least two witnesses, it's an effective document. Oh, see, good to know. Okay. And so don't, you know what, in the world of DIYers, this is not a DIY thing. You don't want to screw this up. You know, you want someone that knows what they're doing. I know Amber and I would recommend her to anybody personally. And I don't hand out recommendations a lot. You guys know that. So she would have your best interest in mind. Name the other services real quick that you do, Amber. What else you do? Um, so through estate planning, I I, um, I do, you know, wills, trust, power of attorneys, things of that nature. There's a lot of specialized trusts that we can do as well. Um, uh, my other focus area is family law. So um, that's everything from uh, divorces, custody, child support, parenting time. It also includes adoptions and guardianships, um, things of that nature. Um, in the firm that I work with, uh, I work for Gravis Law, and we have attorneys that deal with bankruptcy, uh, business law, business litigation. Um, so, and, and then we have some attorneys that deal with criminal law. So we have pretty uh, wide availability of, of services. Yeah, you do. And I know I've heard from a couple of friends that have used your services for uh, custody that you just like grab hold and don't let go and you like to win. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> so did I miss anything? Is there any last words that you would like to give everybody? Um, I, I don't think so. I, I'll put a, um, a link in the comments. So if, if anybody would like to get a hold of me, um, it'll send you just a quick link of a uh, form you could fill out with just your name and phone number. Uh, and I'll get back with you soon. That'd be perfect. Okay. Thanks for joining me last minute. I appreciate it. I was telling you, listen, today is Wednesday, right? Today is Wednesday, April 1st. We need to tell everybody that because every day feels like Saturday and Sunday right now. <laughs> so, and I was getting ready and I just put a little sweater on you. I wouldn't want you to know what's underneath this, but then I put perfume <laughs> on and I'm like, why am I putting perfume on? And so, but Amber looks beautiful. Look at her. She looks oh, like, you. You know, she's at the office and she looks gorgeous. So Amber, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. 
Thanks, Michelle. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye.